Dennis, you want to tell them a little bit more about some things that are going on with that exciting Andis company? Great, great. great. Well, there's a few things I want to talk about as far as um, right now, by show of hands, how many of you are using social media? Keep your hands up if you exclusively use social media to promote your business. See how many hands went down? Here's what I suggest you do. You know, years, for, for a long period of time, I was a, a, a Blackberry lover. You know, <laughs> I was team Blackberry for the longest. But then when I switched over to iPhone, it was primarily because of Instagram. You know, a lot of people may not like Instagram, but I would say Instagram has been one of my best friends in reference to social media and building business. The professional network of barbers and hairstyles is huge. It's huge. And the opportunity to gain customers, consistent customers, is huge. I've gotten more customers for my salon through Instagram than just about any other social media most recently. And the main reason why is because you're utilizing imagery. What do we create? We create images. We create images, uh, uh, capture images of people that are looking their best. Did you have a question in the back? <laughs> he wants to make sure he, he shouts out his Instagram, everybody follow him. Um, for those that are on Instagram, my, my uh, Instagram name is Clipper EDU. Um, here's what I like to do is I like to make sure that I'm connecting with barbers and hairstylists for the main reason why it's building my professional network. Here's what happens. We inspire each other. There's different tips and techniques that you may end up learning just by somebody from a different end of the earth, you know, just by sharing different styles and different techniques that you may be executing. One of the things that I personally do is diff share different tools from the Andis Company as they are released. So if you want to learn about new tools from the Andis Company, make sure whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram that you're in con connection with me. Um, full name on Facebook is Kenny Duncan. Full name on, on Instagram is Clipper EDU. And also, I have a group on Facebook. It's called Clipper Education, powered by Andis. Currently, we have over 1,900 barbers networking from not just America, but from all over the world. And here's what happens. Different individuals are posting different haircuts and sharing different tips and techniques of how they're executing their styles and in particular styles that may be fashionable in their geographical locations. That becomes valuable for you to stay relevant in your neighborhoods. Do you understand the value that you have with that one? Personal challenge. Use it exclusively for building business. You don't want to mix business with pleasure. It's going to be hard for you to build business if you're sharing, you know, what club you just went to, what you were drinking, and, you know, some, uh, some scantily clad, you know, uh, attire that you have worn as well. It's going to be hard to build business in that particular fashion. Uh, if you want to use it just for your personal use, I mean, uh, it's, it's a, it ends up being a, a waste of time. You have an incredible resource right there to use right at your fingertips. Um, personal, personal note on building male clientele. <laughs> Come out to the shows. Uh, I believe we have one of our educators, Roderick Samuels, as well as um, well as Jay the Barber, uh, Lamont Josephs. They're going to be teaching different classes over the weekend, and as well as a wealth of other barber and stylist classes that I suggest that everybody attend. The reason why I suggested you attend is because it helps you build your, your repertoire of what you know, what you've learned, and it increases your self-worth. The more you increase your self-worth, the more opportunities that you end up having, the more things you can end up executing, and the opportunities become endless. I'll always suggest that you be prepared without the opportunity instead of having an opportunity and not being prepared. I always suggest that one. Here's one of the things that I've personally grown and learned over the years. I've personally learned and grown over the years how to be, consider myself a multicultural clipper cutter. And I will tell you this. This is how useful it is for me now. Um, I have a particular client. His name is Ty Trivet. I was, I've been cutting his hair for numerous years. Out of all of his album covers, you will see my work on the front cover of his albums. But I've also built relationships with the people behind the scenes with him. There's an individual that's been working with him for years. His name is Aaron Camper. Aaron Camper is a background singer, but also a professional uh, R&B artist as well. He sings background for Chris Brown. So now I have an opportunity to cut hair backstage for Chris Brown. And he also just recently started uh, um, singing background for Justin Timberlake. The phone call that I just received yesterday was that... Justin Timberlake's new album just was, was re new, newly released. They're going to be starting a tour soon. So now I have an opportunity where I'm going to be cutting hair on the tour. Now here's the personal challenge that came forth on this conversation. They said, Kenny, we know that you're very good with African-American hair. They said, what about with straight hair? Can you execute it? Because I've sat in classes and because I've participated in ongoing education, I reached out of what was just in my neighborhood. 
and force myself to continue to grow. I already had pictures of executed haircuts and styles that I emailed to them and they said, fine, we'll test you out. So moving forward, as they schedule this particular tour, every 10 days I'm going to be flying out to cut hair backstage for the Justin Timberlake tour. Here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying this to brag. What I am saying is, it's always best to be prepared versus not having an opportunity, or versus you know having an opportunity and not being prepared. It's always best. Participate in the classes. Understand the new tools that are coming out. Stop by the Anders booth. Share different information with different individuals. Learn about the new tools and the techniques and how they, be ex how they can be executed. Continue to add value to yourself. I will tell you this. What you do in your spare time which will determine what you're doing while you're on the clock. I'll repeat that again. What you do in your spare time will determine what you're doing while on the clock. What am I saying? Me personally, I'm watching educational videos. Me personally, I'm having conversations with mentors. Me personally, I'm actually figuring out what tools and techniques can be utilized for something different outside of the box. I'm practicing new things for free for some of the individuals. I guarantee you, you will always have somebody that's willing to let you try out something new. You go to a trade show, you learn something new, I guarantee you have a client that trusts you or somebody who's less fortunate that's looking for opportunity just to look better than what they did yesterday. Execute those styles, try those things out, build your professional repertoire, and also build a portfolio. Build a portfolio, that is your resume. That's how I got into photography myself. I wanted to continue to build a, an enormously large library of different images and seeing where they can be utilized. And I will tell you, Anytime anybody wants a particular hairstyle, I have my own personal pictures to show them as a personal reference on how your haircut potentially can look. I'm not saying that it's bad to have other pictorial magazines, such as a Solid Gold, Style Q, or any other magazines that may be beneficial to you. But what I am saying is I have personal, personal things that I've executed that I can show people for that particular purpose. And um, I don't want this to make this about me. I want to make this about the opportunity that you have. Because the reality is, the individuals that's on the stage competing, this is not easy to do. You know, this takes a lot of heart for individuals to do. You know, they're already winners just by entering into this competition. Outside of the investment that they made into themselves and to those tools, just being on this stage alone, the national press that they're going to receive alone, I believe I've seen some video cameras and a lot of photographers already taking pictures. Just that in itself is worth the price of admission. Then, cutting hair outside of the comfort of your own salon. That's not easy to do. Has anybody ever um, done mobile services for anybody? Shameless plug for the Anus Clipper Company. We have uh, cordless tools that's perfect <laughs> for mobile service. The BGRC has an option for a battery pack to be added to it, and it's one of my favorite tools when I'm doing my mobile services for different individuals. There are times when I had to cut hair in random places. This time I've cut hair in bathrooms. This time I've cut hair in large dressing rooms. I mean, lighting isn't always adequate, so we also have a, a, a tool called the headlight clippers, the detachable blade clipper that has lights on it for the purpose of utilizing, I mean, uh, give you additional lighting so you can utilize in those bad uh, opportunities where you have bad light. So we have different tools for different people, for different situations, different needs. But what I suggest is that you have the right tools and that you prepare ahead of time for when you don't even have that opportunity. And these guys here, they're cutting hair in a different environment, which is they're not used to. This, this in itself is, is not easy, you know? You gotta figure, if they're not sweating, if their hands are not sweating right now, mm -hmm. something's wrong with them. <laughs> you know, when I was up there on the stage, I mean, I was, I know, I was nervous, you know? And shake it a little bit, you know? I was nervous because you don't have so many eyes looking at you, more than what you have in your average salon looking at you, determining whether you're executing a good haircut or not. And that's the pressure that they're under right now. They're executing with the Anders tools, they're executing some great styles, as we can see. You know, It's a pleasure for me to be here. I mean, I'm elated. Just the opportunity just to watch and see other people grow and learn. Um, I have personal individuals that I've connected with on the stage and off, and I would like to see that professional network continue to grow as well. And when is your motivational uh, CD being released, darling? <laughs> well, thus far, uh, at, uh, down on the floor, uh, anybody knows, if you're willing to share with me any type of, any type of story, or uh, are you willing to engage with me, I'm going to give you that same amount of energy back. So, on social networks, if you communicate with me, I'm going to make sure I'm communicating with you back. And the reason why is because 
I've been blessed with a lot of opportunities to have a lot of mentors. So because of the understanding of why... <laughs> what I was saying is because I have an opportunity to have a lot of mentors, I'm not going to be in a position if somebody comes to me and asks me a question on how I did this or what tool did I use, I'm never going to be you know, uh, shy to actually engage with that individual because I know that's how I, how I got here. You know, I believe in life there's always going to be a situation where there's, a, there's going to be somebody that you're getting from, and as much as you're getting, you should be giving now. The more that your hand is open, it's not just for you to receive. It's for you to receive and to pass out. I know you know that way. Down on the stage, well, I'm sharing not just education, but inspiration. And the goal, I have a website called clippereducation.com, powered by Andis. Uh, as you know, um, I'm primarily, and I actually not primarily, only using the Andis tools, electric tools. Um, but on that website, we have educational videos, but also the purpose of it, and the reason why I was created, is because of the nature of how I started. I want to share the different things that I've learned from other individuals. There's nothing new under the sun. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. You may put your own personal twist on something that you may have learned from somebody else, but at the end of the day, 99% of the stuff that we, that we end up doing, has been, we've been influenced by somebody else. So who am I to, to not be an insp inspiration or, or motivation or provide motivation for anybody else? Because that's what other people have done for me. You know, most recently, there's one particular guy that I, uh, that I, 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 I quote his name more often than not. His name is Eric Cheek. Um, when I first started out in this clipper cutting industry, I was only known for basic, clean clipper cuts. You know, when I started, first started working with the Andes Company, one of the things they expected was just that. That's the reason why they brought me on. I built a professional network where people were fans of my work, just basic, clean clipper cuts. But one of the things I became most recently known for, and I executed yesterday on the stage, down in the Andes stage, I educate, because it's Black History Month, I uh, executed a picture of Martin Luther King. Did anybody get a chance to see that? No. I know some people were down there on the stage. But I did that down on the stage. But I only learned those things. There seems to be music going in the background. Could you please be so kind as to tr either turn it down or turn it off? Okay, I'm so sorry, but it was distracting to me, and I'm listening to Dennis, so I'm sure it's distracting to you. Am I correct? I don't mean to be rude. Okay, um, but back with, with, um, with Dennis, he's going to talk to you about these other things. I want to be sure that you guys uh, get some some gifts and things, which is, he's, they're very famous for giving gifts away. Take it away. For those who didn't know, Dennis is my middle name. <laughs> That's why I haven't said anything. Some of you didn't know that one. But back in August, we released our 90th anniversary edition master. It was cherry red, and it was the, the commemorate. 90 years of business for the Andes Company. I told you when it was released. Now, based on those numbers, can somebody tell me, by show of hands, can somebody tell me what year the Andes Company started? Can you stand up, please? He said 1920. Close, but no cigar. Gentleman in back. 1923. 1923. Close. 1923. Close, but no cigar. 1922. You 90th right. anniversary tool was released last August. It's 2013 minus a year. 2012. You gonna come up or you want me to throw it to you? Here. Uh oh, too far. Can anybody name? Can anybody name for me five Andes tools other than the Andes Master? in a T-outliner. Can you stand up, please? Everybody? You see, super liner, and a super liner. It says, and it's cool care. Here's the and it's oil. Come on. Come on. 
He got Anderson MVP? You got my head. <laughs> Come on, you're close, you're close. Don't give up now, don't give up okay. Don't give up okay. Anybody want to help him out? Fade. Uh, so don't, don't yell it out. Don't yell it out. Don't yell it out. And it's fade. Can you name four others? Oh, <coughs> didn't, didn't he flip out you? I was trying to help him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, can, you, can you name four others? You're the Andis Fade Master. Andis Fat Master. Andis Superliner. Andis Styliner 2s. And the Andis MVPs. I'm actually going to give all three of you guys the towels because you did a great job. Thank you, bro. Hey, listen, I want to make a couple comments. He said he wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, uh, this gentleman, uh, as, he was, as I was walking by, he, uh, he pulled me to the side and he heard that I was from Philadelphia. And he said, what part of Philadelphia are you from? Because I'm from North Philadelphia. And he told me that he was cutting hair for 45 years. So I will tell you this. Because of that, I will tell you, I know for a fact. I've never seen him cut hair, but I know that I can learn something from him. In 45 years of business, this is something that we all can learn from this gentleman. Tell me My name is Gerald Joyce. I'm from Philly. Uh, just to give you a brief history, I was raised in a barber shop. I used to get a whooping for sweeping the hair, not sweeping the hair off the floor. But uh, I started out by watching my dad. I was about 10 years old. And uh, he put my first pair of clippers in my hand when I was 15. And I've been cutting hair ever since. The only, thing, only way you can receive something in this business is with your hand. When you use your hands, you can receive. And then you use your hands to give out your talent. Now you got a million dollars in both of them. You got one in this hand, and it's a million in this. Believe me, I know. Because I've been doing here that long. I just want to tell y'all, y'all stand parents come through. I've been coming to the Brown Brothers show for 40 years. She mentioned Alla Benson. Alla Benson was my mentor. Right. I learned everything from her. I can cut with anything. I'm a master haircut. I cut with clippers, scissors, cut glass. It comes from paying attention, watching, and being around people like this. You got to come to the shows because if you stay in the shop, you're just going to fade away. Right. And I've been coming. I just keep coming and keep coming because i got to keep up. Because these young people are just putting it down. Because, because this gentleman just inspired us all. With, even, 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 even what he said was an inspiration, but it was what he didn't say that was even a bigger inspiration for me. And I'm going I'm to I'm elaborate. You have 26 minutes. 26 minutes. I'm going to give him a few extra things just because he, he actually just blessed me. And he just blessed you all with this, this one little nugget. He said after 45 years of, of business, he's still learning. Yes. After 45 years of business, he's still coming to learn and continue to evolve and grow. One of the things that, that makes it even more, you know, it does my heart well even more, is because the average barber, this is not just for your hairstyles. Hair, women are a little bit different. You know, we know how women are a little different, but men, a lot of times barbers feel as though they can't learn from anybody else. Once they become the best in their neighborhoods, that's it. That's what happens to a lot of barbers. For whatever reasons, the pride, it, 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 it kills. Because here's the reality. We shut ourselves off from other opportunities when we believe that we've attained it all. After 45 years of business, this male barber is saying that he's still looking for opportunities to learn and grow. 45 years of business actually says a lot. It says that he knows what it takes to execute a business already. So he can really, he already has a resume that can cause him to be arrogant. He has a resume. But yet he's still saying and challenging you to continue to learn and grow, continue to evolve. I just want to say thank you for that one. That was great.
Thank you so much. You know, we always like to have testimonies around here because, you know, we're a living testimony within ourselves. Testing one, two. Thank you. We're a living testimony within ourselves. Contestants, you have 24 minutes. You guys learning something here today? Yes. You learning a lot? Okay. Nobody's learning anything over here. No one. Is anyone over here learning anything? Okay. Tell me what you learned. What you learned? Okay. She didn't learn nothing yet. Did you learn anything? Okay. Did you learn anything? Did you learn anything, gorgeous? Just got here. Who did just get here on this side and learn something? Nobody? Okay, let me. Because I know you learn something. You hear every, every competition we have. Okay, what did you learn? I learned that the older gentleman, what he gave us as far as one million in one hand and one million in the other. We just have to really uh, push forward to do the best we can do, and we never stop learning. Apply yourself and keep growing. That's it. What did you learn, handsome? What did you learn? I know you learned something because you had every competition that we had. What did you learn? What I learned for if you're going to, for people who do have their barbershop salons, retail is one, so you don't get stuck with hmm. just cutting hair, doing hair. Stop your money from just right there. Uh, I've also learned coming here, I want to compete. I'm thinking about it in August. That's why I'm here. So I can see what the judges may be looking for before I compete. And me and my wife, we're getting ready to start our own. And my next step is to find out how to do it. Where are you from? I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. Great. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. How have you been? Good, good, good. That's a great, great team. Husband and wives make great teams. You know that? That's another thing. You know, sometimes you marry the wrong husband, marry the wrong wife. You be wondering, why I can't move forward? Wrong husband, wrong wife. Your brains must think alike. You know that? Don't get hung up because he or she cute and pretty, honey. And they be dummies. Literally, they just be cute and dumb. You know? You ask them, did they pay the electric bill? They said, what's that? Oh, she do. I thought you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, darling. Thank you. Give a big round of applause for one of our runners. This is one of our children that's grown up. See, I was telling you about them children that be out there. She used to sell books too. Now she all big and cute and long hair. Talking about going on a diet yesterday. Was, Jesus, you make me feel old. But um, this is really, really a great, great opportunity as, as um, Dennis said. This is a great opportunity for marketing of yourselves, you know, and to learn a lot, you know. Uh, Dennis, how much are you guys selling the bumper stuff on the floor for? How much is it? On the bump care wipes retail for ten dollars. We also have a, in a liquid form as well. We retail for ten dollars in our larger bottle. We also have a smaller bottle. We retail for six dollars. Is that the suggested retail price at the salons or in the barber shops? You have a unique opportunity with this item because it isn't. Uh, recognized nationally just yet. It's not in every beauty supply store just yet. Because it, it, it is an exclusive item in that particular realm, you can mark it up because it's, it's an exclusive item. Whenever you have an item that isn't available everywhere, you have the ability, within reason, to add a considerable markup to it. Is there a quantity price? Do not know the quantity price, but you can come down to the Andrews booth if you would want to retail the item and you want to buy it in larger quantities. Because with quantities, each particular quantity is going to uh, uh, decide for a different price with it. The larger you order, the smaller you order is going to be, end up being different prices. So come down to the Andrews booth. I'll introduce you to the right individuals. They can help you set up any, any retail you want to do, whether you want to just be with the bump care or even with other items that we do as, have as well. Shameless plug again for you cosmetologists. Stylist, we're not only just a clipper company. We have a full line of flat irons, a new line of titanium plate flat irons. It's amazing. One of the things I will tell you about the titanium plates is that the smooth plates will not snag on the pores of your hair. 
there are some lower end uh, lower end ceramic plates that actually snag on your on your pairs. We have a, a, a celebrity stylist named Shakira Clark. That's downstairs. She has her own exclusive booth for the Anthos Company, styling and featuring, uh, and it's blow dryers, flat irons, and curling irons as well. And a titanium line, ladies, I lie to you not. It's on par with all the high end companies that make hot tools out there. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not making this up. The quality that we put into this tool and is, 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 is supersedes anything we've done before, and we're looking to be a, a, a premier company in that particular area. One thing I'll tell you about the Andes company that I personally love is they're always looking to improve their products, not just for themselves, but for you. If you value your tools, then you'll value the brand. And that's one of our personal models, to make sure that we build quality tools that make your job easier. Thank you. Now, that's why I'm, t I'm t really, really hung up on this retail thing, because I didn't see any hands, very, very few hands go up on retail. And, you know, the biggest thing about retail is that, especially when you're at the show, the more you buy, the less you pay. Okay? So if you have three stylists or three barbers, even if you're not from the same salons or the same barber shops, you might be in the same area, or you may just be good buddy pals. Merge your money and go in and buy the things that you need to be retailing in your salons and in your barbershops so you'll be able to make that addi additional revenue. Because sometimes you're sitting around and you're not, you're not cutting hair. You know? But if you sit and you add up all the monies that you've made from your, from your retailing, then that makes up for those slow times. You see what I'm saying? Also, you want to get out and you want to get involved in your communities. You know, how many of you are involved in community affairs? Okay, I see one or two. What are you doing in your community? Our school, we go to Palm Beach and School Orlando, and uh, we're always doing haircuts for homeless or uh, going to our Amory Center, which is like our basketball center for our team, and uh, we're doing cuts for kids when they go back to school. So we're always giving back to the community. That's great. That's great. And you know what? The plus on that, uh, uh, just like they said, uh, they give back to the community by helping school kids. You know, school kids grow up to get jobs. Do you realize that? So you're really investing in your own future when you're doing volunteer work. You know, and I'm, I'm focusing on barbering because you have so many homeless shelters. You know, and there are really no programs for men to get them back at work. There are many programs to get women back at work. But there are really no programs to get men back at work, believe it or not. So if you're looking for something to do, then go to the men's shelters and volunteer your work. I know some of them are a little kooky. You know, but they're kooky because they couldn't help themselves. And often they need somebody else to give them a helping hand. You know, so if you want to invest in your own community and you want to even market yourself, you can get free advertising from your television stations and your radio stations just by volunteering your services to a community shelter. Did you know that? Will not cost you a dime. Yes, dear. Okay, okay. Also, contestants, uh, when, if you, uh, once you finish, once the um, competition is over, if you have any questions, the judges will be just outside the door, and you'll be able to ask them any questions about how you may have improved on your look, whether you win or you don't place. Either way. But, you know, I really encourage you guys to get involved in some of your community affairs, you know, and make a difference in your communities. You know, because each thing that you do, you're actually doing it so that you can, you can build your business. And you're giving something so your business will automatically be built up. Uh, to piggyback on what, what Ms. Britannica is talking about in reference to finding out about opportunities to service your community, as well as find out opportunities to build retail business in, in your salons, I want to bring before you one of our personal friends, as well as a mentor, and I'll put you on a fast track to additional uh, build, building of your brand and networking opportunities. This is Mr. Chavez Moment. Uh, he has a radio show that's designed for our industry called The Barber Zone. And on this show, he brings awareness to different opportunities that may be available for each and every body based on the social networks that he ties himself to. Um, he, he would like to tell you more about it. 
Um, but he's been one of the individuals that's helped connect me to other individuals that end up being personal mentors of mine, such as Chris Burke. I just seen him in here not too long ago. Which, well, well, by show of hands, who has been on or listened to uh, Barber's Own Radio before? Anybody? A couple? A couple? You all need to be listening. <laughs> Great, he's going to tell you more about it But those of you who have your hands up, I'm going to keep them up Because I'm going to reward those that are social networking And building better business in, in our industry Hold on. How you doing everyone? My name is Chavez Moment I'm the owner of Barber's Own Barber Studio I'm out of Columbus, Ohio And like he said, I have a From coming to the Bronner Brothers show And listening to sisters like this I've been here maybe 7-8 years I started on the stage, and from listening to her and everything she's talked about, yo, that's invaluable information. So, I started this up, I want to do things different. All of us cut hair. But what are you doing different? What are you doing to separate yourself from the other barbers in your shop, the other barbers in your community? So, I said, we need a voice. We don't have a voice. Barbers don't have a voice. We're here because this show was for stylists, but they have a barber part, so that's why the barbers are here. But So I said, what better than a talk show? For y'all that don't know me, I'm like the Tom Joyner of the Barber Game. So, the name of my show was In the Barber Zone. And I came up with that because, like right now, even though we talking, we asking questions, what are these competitors in? They're in the zone. When you're at the highest point of competing, creativity, anything, you're what? In the zone. And we're what? We're barbers. Barber zone. So when you get on my show, you're in the barber zone. It comes on every Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find it at blogtalkradio.com slash barberzone. Or go to barberzone.org, which is, which is my official website, and we talk about what goes on in our communities. From this show, I'm, I'm be doing it tomorrow. Tomorrow from the floor at 1 p.m. You can call in, put this in your phones, 347-637-3850. And we're just gonna be talking about what's going on at Bronner. But when I get back home, I've made some new connections and some of the people y'all see in the booths are gonna be on the show. That's what I do, we talk about what's going on in the barber community. If you want to advertise yourself, you want to find out about new products, you want to find out how to give back to your community, because that's what I am. I'm a product of the community. We're all products of community. If you don't give back to your community, you'll be sitting in your shop by yourself. Like she said, go to your churches, homeless shelters, schools, everything. But barberzone.org, that's the website, blogtalkradio.com slash barberzone is the, is, is the website. So... I got some cards, I'll give them to you guys, and hopefully I hear you on the radio. 347-637-3850. And, and if you're on Twitter, 3850. It's Barbazone on Twitter, so just follow us on Twitter and you'll see. We're going to be blasting it about the show tomorrow. So much success, y'all, and y'all already winners because y'all came to the show. You stepped out of your own comfort zone to become better. So if you don't go back better, that's your own fault. Because it's a lot of free, invaluable information. This is free. And if you don't take it back home and become a better barber, that's your own fault. That's wonderful. Give him a big round of applause. As you guys can see, the door is open. All you really have to do is walk through it. You have every asset that you need at the Bronner Brothers International Hair Show. I often have people, in fact, I had a lady here yesterday that said that she got burnout. I don't believe in burnout. I don't even know how you can get burnout if you're in an industry that has this much going on. Um, and I'm going to piggy, piggyback on what Kenny was saying in reference to um, uh, multicultural. You have to learn to be more multicultural. Years ago, people would say hair is hair is hair. It's not. It's not. I'm sorry. It's just not. Asian hair is different from Irish hair. Uh, Hawaiian hair is different from black American hair. African hair is different from black American hair. So if you have the opportunity to go into a multicultural 
barber experience or hairstyling experience, please take advantage of it. The world that we live in today will always be somewhat segregated, factually speaking. We all like who we like. It's just the way of the world. But ever so, long, so often, a group comes along, like this group here. In the years that I have been in this company, I was born in this company, frankly, I see different ethnicities coming in more and more and more and more. Because we learn more and more and more from each other. If you're confined to a salon where everybody looks like you, or a barber shop where everybody looks like you, you're limiting yourself. You're completely limiting yourself. And if you're in a structured salon, especially if you're just starting out and you're going in, into a chain salon, which is mostly where you get your experience when you first come out of school, unless you're lucky enough to be an assistant to someone that is already very, very successful, you must know how to work with all types of hair. All types of hair you have to know how to work with. You know, so I implore you, especially when you're at the show, do your networking with somebody that don't look just like you. You understand what I'm saying? Network with somebody that doesn't look like you. You know, and invite them to your place. I mean, there's so much opportunity out here. It's just unbelievable. The op and, and I get a little flustered, you know, because we don't take advantage all, of all the opportunity that we really, really have. You know, social media is one thing. But the barber and beauty industry is a very, very social business. It always has been a very, very social business. I have people that I have known in the industry since I first came into the industry, and I have grown with them, you know? But, and recently, just recently, um, last week I was in New York doing part of Fashion Week. I hadn't done Fashion Week in 150 years, to be honest with you. I really hadn't. I was too busy doing other things, you know? But the young, there was a young lady in the salon, which is also a multicultural salon. She invited me. She said, I have two bookings, and, and I love your work. Please come and help us. Okay? From that, I managed to get one of the New York housewives as a client. Her hair is not Afro-American. Okay? Just from working with her backstage. So open yourselves up. You know, please begin to open yourselves up. Stop being so locked into everybody that looks like you. Do anybody's hair, honey. You know? And I, the, getting back to this lady, I said to her, I said, you know, the reason why you get burnt out is because you're not energizing yourself. You know? Each salon, and I'm going to be frank with you, it takes time to get the right team in your salon if you're a salon owner. There's almost always one crazy person. Isn't there? There's always one crazy person. They run from, from, from station to station. They need some hairspray. They need to borrow your shears. They need to borrow a razor. They don't have any serum. They need some shampoo. They need a neck wrap. That's the person that you do not want to befriend. And believe it or not, all of their clients are the same way. Have you noticed that? The clients are late, they bring crying babies, they have problems with their husband, the police may come and pull them out of the salon. Hey darling, it's, it's always something. That's the person that you want to work very, 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 very hard. Don't be friends with them. Have minimal conversation. Contestants, you have six minutes left because that energy will pour over into you. Believe it or not, it will literally pour into you and you'll find yourself forgetting your flat iron. You don't have enough bobby pins for an updo. You forgot the word that Dennis told you about the bumps powder. It's all, it will always be something. And the best thing to do is to try and get that person out of your salon. You know, because it's chaos. And you don't want chaos. How many of you have, have weekly meetings in your salons or barbershops? No one has weekly or monthly meetings? I saw one hand go up. Y'all are operating in craziness. 
you have to have meetings because you have to set, set presence for the things that you want to do, even for that one meeting. Even for that one meeting, you must, I mean, for that, for that one week. Each week, you should have something that you're focusing on as a team, no matter who's the owner, no matter who's the boss. Each week, there should be something that you're focusing on. Just like I keep talking to you about this retail. You can take one retail item and say, this week, we're all going to push this retail item. We're going to push this one retail item. This is going to be our hot item for the week. Now, clients may ask for something else, but this is what we're going to push. And whoever sells the most gets free dinner at Maggiano's, a gift certificate. You see what I'm saying? You have to have some kind of incentive. But a lot of, and I see so many businesses today, especially small businesses that, that fail. Contested chair, four minutes. I see so many businesses that fail, and they're failing simply because, one, they have no goals set, even a weekly goal. They don't set a weekly goal. You know, I set a goal for myself every week. Even if I'm not working, I set a goal for myself. And I have to, at the end of the week, look back and see if I accomplished it. I work toward it. You know, so having to do with your business, you want to be sure that you set some goals, that you have some meetings. Mr. Bronner believed in meetings. And when I was 14 years old, I had to go to school, but I had to be in a meeting at 7 o'clock in the morning before I went to school. Could you get away from the I really did. But that sat me and, and that, that molded me into the person that I am now. You know, and last night we were at a big dinner party. One of, my, one of our judges called in to uh, Tracy, who is our, show, is our competition manager, and she said to her, she said, I know that I'm going to be late, but I know Miss Britannica is there. And we, she actually left before I did. She really did. But she knows me that well. You know, and that came from me sitting in meetings every week. Contestants, you have two minutes. Contestants, you have two minutes. In the event that you are finished, you may pull your things together. Um, please be sure that you leave the hair on the floor so that it can be seen. Place your model the way that you'd like for them to be shown. And believe it or not, you can actually leave the stage. Be sure that their number is exposed so that the judges will be able to see it. Be sure that the judges can see your Block number. Blocking the clock. That's what I'm saying. Get up. Come on. Okay. Be sure the judges can see your number. If you're finished, put all of your things together and you may leave the stage. Contestants, you have one minute and about 40 minutes. I mean, one minute and about 40 seconds. One minute and about 40 seconds. One minute and about 40 seconds. Actually, now, now one minute and 20 seconds. Okay, everybody on your feet. Everybody stand up. Stand up, let's give them some good energy and let's do a countdown. Let's do a countdown. They have less than one, uh, one minute, okay? Let's do it. 60, 59, I can't hear you, 58, 57, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Not yet, not yet. Louder, Louder. say it. Can you count? Go on. I know, she get on my nerves. I don't know who you think you are. 45, I can't hear you. 45, 45. All these bass voices, let's go. 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 36. Come on, Darren. Come on, Darren. 4, 3, 2, 1, 30, 29. What is y'all, how y'all count? 
Yeah. 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 Brush them. Hurry up. Brush them. Come on. Hurry up, Dares. Hurry up. Hurry up, Dares. Hurry up. Hurry up, Dares. Hurry up, Dares. Brush out from his face. Five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Put the fire out of her house. Child, this hurt. I can't speak to her. I heard you. Please get that one with the red name. Okay, get my phone. I heard her. Get my phone. Did you hear her? <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> oh, Lord, we're going to fall. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow, 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 wow. Gentlemen, you all did a fabulous job. This Christmas tree, All did an absolutely fabulous job. Oh, you the five, man. I ain't mad. You're the pictures. You're the videos. You're the Because shortly our judges will be coming to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, will be coming to us shortly. Uh, my hand. Yeah, give them a clap. Give them a big round of applause. This look is very, very diverse. A lot of it is urban trend. A lot of it may be community looks. A lot of it are international looks. 